The battle was disastrous for Caraticus and his people. The Roman war machine was just too well oiled, too well engineered. Caraticus himself fled the battlefield, but his wife, his brother and his daughter were taken prisoner. And the rest of his people were either enslaved or slaughtered. This crushing defeat was a dreadful blow for those who wished to throw off the Roman yoke. And there was even worse news to come. In the wake of the battle, Caraticus turned for help to the Brigantes, a tribe who occupied part of northern Britain. He thought of them as allies, but they turned out to be foes. To curry favour with the Romans, they clapped their countryman in chains and handed him over to Astorius Scapula. The Romans were cock-a-hoop and determined to maximise the propaganda opportunity Caraticus's capture had handed to them. He and his family were carted off to Rome, where they faced an unenviable fate. They were going to take part in a show trial, presided over by the Emperor Claudius himself. The Roman soldiers who'd carried out the invasion of Britain were delighted to have captured their arch enemy Caraticus and thrilled that he was going to be subjected to a show trial presided over by the Emperor Claudius. But like everyone else, they were totally unprepared for the next twist in this extraordinary tale. What happened when Caraticus arrived in Rome has to be one of the most vivid stories in classical history. And it's all set down in this fantastic series of books, The Annals of Imperial Rome. The author Tacitus tells us that the British warrior and his family were displayed in the centre of the city and were to be put to death. A crowd gathered to watch the bloodletting. And then, apparently on a whim, the Emperor Claudius decides to allow Caraticus to make a final plea for his life. And if this account is accurate, then what followed was a speech and a half. Noble Emperor and people of Rome, if I had been less successful in resisting you, I could well have come to your city as your friend, not as a prisoner. You might well have been glad under those circumstances to ally yourself with someone so nobly born. As things are, I face humiliation, while you have glory. I had horses, men, weapons. Are you surprised I'm sorry to have lost them? Just because you want to rule the world, do you think everyone else is happy to be made a slave? If I had surrendered without a fight, no one would have heard of my downfall or your triumph. If you kill me, they will both be forgotten. But if you spare me, I shall stand forever as a symbol of your mercy. We can't be sure whether that eloquence was Caraticus's own or whether it's Tacitus proving what a powerful speechwriter he is. But whichever way, the words worked. Claudius granted Caraticus and his family a pardon and gave them permission to live on in Rome. In one sense, it is a small, final victory for Caraticus, but in another, it's Claudius proving that he has the ultimate power. He is the man who can decide whether to take away a life or to give it back. It is quite unusual to be merciful to an enemy leader in this way. Um, previously um, captured enemy leaders like, like Jugurtha um, fr from North Africa and Vercingetorix, the, the, the great leader who had, um, who had defied Caesar, um, they had been taken into Rome, um, shown in, in the triumph and then ritually strangled afterwards. So actually to, to be shown such mercy um, is unusual, but it allows the emperor to show his clementia, to, to show the quality of mercy that a great ruler can show. 
And what it does show actually is that Claudius may have been weak politically when he first became emperor, but he knew exactly which buttons to press. He knew exactly what to do to ensure his political and military security um, and, and to, to behave as a great Roman ruler should. For Graticus, the moment must have been bittersweet. He'd won his freedom, but lost his purpose, the thing he'd been born to do. Caraticus came from a background where to be fighting the world's greatest superstate and giving it a monumental runaround gave him a huge amount of prestige. He was probably having the time of his life when he fought the Romans. He was a true somebody. Everything he had ever been had come to fruition. This was what being a tribal leader was all about. Once he went to Rome and got his pension and his villa, he disappeared. And we never hear another sound about him.